Hello everyone, this is Kelly Beard of KarmicTools.com and this is your weekly forecast for November 13th through the 19th of 2022. I guess before I jump into the forecast, I want to suggest that you request the replays of my Taurus Scorpio call and the 1111 call I just did with Shanta Gabriel. Both were pretty wonderful and if you missed them and would like the replays, just let me know. So our week kicks off on the 13th, which is Sunday. With Venus sextile Pluto, this energy deepens all emotions and strengthens bonds and attachments. Friendships and love relationships become much deeper and sometimes more intense, not to mention any physical sexual experiences. Being fake or superficial is never possible when Pluto is involved. And because Venus is involved, we're talking relationships or how you relate in general. So if you're needing to dig a little deeper with someone, you are supported. This energy can facilitate positive transformation in your relationships, partnerships, or collaborations. It will give you added power to help you change what needs changing, or at least get it on the table for a deeper discussion or a clearing conversation. Your emotional intensity may be at an unusually high level, so be sure to surround yourself with people who love you unconditionally, or try to be alone and just reflect on what you're feeling. Deep breath. Then Monday the 14th, We have Mercury sextile in Pluto. So Venus and Mercury, a little tag team right now. This energy provokes the need to delve deeper into the ideas or information being presented at this time, whether personal or professional. You will want to dig deeper, ask the hard questions, and gather insights that are more profound than usual. In your professional public life, you may find yourself doing better on proper pre-planning and due diligence And in your personal private life, you may find yourself digging a little deeper into your own mental patterns and personal history that has led to now. As you make these connections and begin to grasp these new insights, they will gain traction and you will become more grounded in your own truth. We all get excited about these kind of aha moments, and you may find yourself wanting to share them with others who may or may not be ready to hear such deep truths or have the conscious awareness to even process them. So use some discernment around who and when you share these newfound insights or these deeper insights. Same day, Sun is going to try Neptune. This energy triggers your idealistic, altruistic inclinations. But remember that help has to be invited. So if you have the energy to share and to spare, then dedicate yourself to something greater than you. Choose a cause to support or help those less fortunate for the sheer pleasure of giving. If your energy is low at this time, it is better directed inward. If you can, take some extra time in intentional solitude, praying, meditating, and connecting to spirit this week. You will be rewarded with deep revelations and mystical discoveries within you. It's a great time to do divinations, ritual, or ceremony if you're into that. Your intuition is heightened also, so pay attention to any messages that come through or to you. Try to use this energy to reflect on where you are and dream a little about where you want to be, mentally, spiritually, and physically, basically in six months to a year from now. Let's think in that timeline because of the sun. The next day is Tuesday the 15th when Venus will try on Jupiter. So this is kind of juicy. Sun, which is our personality and identity and kind of direction at this time, is linking up with the spiritual planet Neptune to connect us deeper And then Venus, values and priorities, our love, money, and magnetics, our relationships and finances, and also the blessings is connecting with Jupiter. The two benefactors are getting together in a trine, which is a blessing without effort. So we can call in the blessings, y'all. This is usually a pleasant energy, although short-lived. This is a good time to enjoy some kind of social activity. No pressure, just easy, laid-back fun. It can make you prone to laziness or excess, but only if you're already prone to that. Otherwise, if you are typically busy and constantly on the go, this energy gives you permission to kick back a little and release the usual pressures to produce. Take some time out to smell the roses, or at least reflect on all that you have accomplished, and give yourself credit for coming this far. This is a good time to travel, go on vacation, or take a short trip. This energy tends to bring forth earned blessings. Take a moment, give thanks to the powers that be, which brought you to this point. Deep breath. So yeah, do some blessing and prayer and affirmations and just claiming what you want because these two can help you manifest it. Then on Wednesday, the 16th, we have Mercury trining Jupiter. This energy is great for expanding your mind, learning something new or taking a class. It's time to plan for the future and start getting organized. 
However, you may feel less disciplined and more creative, which is fine in the beginning, but eventually focus and discipline will have to be engaged to ground your new ideas, thoughts, or concepts. You have to ask yourself, how bad do you want it? If you are self-aware, awake, and alert, you will be able to see and seize the opportunities as they present themselves. It may appear to be luck, but it's really more that you are in alignment with the cosmos, present and positive, and ultimately able to trust and follow your own instincts. Practice, there is no perfection. Being optimistic and looking for opportunity in every experience will magnetize the positive and naturally repel the negative, leading right where you want to be. So take advantage of this good energy to connect to whatever it is that you're trying to create in your life at this time. Same day, Venus enters Sagittarius until December 9th. When Venus is in Sag, we want to expand our relationships and improve our lives in some way. You start to recognize which exchanges with others energize you versus drains you. And subsequently, some partnerships may see a cooling off period where one or both parties get in touch with what they really believe to be true or possible and move from there. The idea is to be optimistic, looking for opportunities, even in the choices and changes that are uncomfortable or challenging. This is the time to infuse your values and priorities with some diversity. Shake it up, expand in some way that allows your creativity to flow and to flow in new ways or through new mediums. Edit and develop the story you are telling with your current values and priorities and notice where you could be more imaginative and authentic and thereby capable of telling a much more interesting story if you allow your own truth to guide you at this time. Think bigger and then begin the steps toward manifesting a higher vision of how you relate with others going forward. This is so perfect for right now because I just got through talking on the 1111 call about dreaming up the new interactions we want to have come spring and summer of 23. Right now, Mars is backwards. We're in this eclipse season. It's ancestor season. We got a lot going on that's telling us to turn inward at this moment. So we want to do that and prepare behind closed doors for forward movement in spring and summer. Just saying. The next day, the 17th is Thursday. Mercury enters Sag until December 6th. So see how they are a little tag team right now, how we think and what our values are are entering some new territory and waking things up for us. When Mercury is in Sag, we get a little more philosophical and start to search for the meaning of the year that we just lived through, essentially, because it always happens around November, December. You have the processing planet in the processing sign. So we are also integrating all that we learned in the last year so that we can claim it as embodied wisdom. Once you've integrated all the aspects of life that have evolved, you can start to look for the potential of the new year. What good ideas can you anchor, build on, and expand in the next year? You are supported to believe something completely new and dream a little bigger than you usually allow yourself to dream. Expand the vision for yourself, for your life, and for the planet. Tell a new story and use December to dream it up. Ashe, I like that. Not to mention that when it does move into Capricorn, it's going to (laughs) retrograde. So let's enjoy this last hurrah to dream up the vision that when it lingers in Capricorn is going to rework things so that we can actually manifest the vision. So it's not a bad thing, but we want to do our dreaming first. Same day on Thursday, the 17th is my next Venus circle. October 22nd was our outer initiation in Libra with the inner advocate reclaiming that higher level of interacting with others that we are also seeding at this moment. Now we have the inner initiation this month in Sag, activating a new story. So we're reclaiming our inner storyteller this month, and I hope you will join us. I've linked the actual Venus Circle page so you can explore if you're new to this community. You can register and donate. I do ask for a $25 donation. That's a subscription. You can either join us every month or just drop in. The Venus Cycle article is really good to review right now because we are at the midpoint in the cycle and it's a good checkpoint to see how it's gone for the last nine months and how you want it to go for the next nine months. That article has a lot of things to think about and journal prompts and good info on the cycle as well. And then if you're wanting your Venus reading and custom guide, which will serve you for the next nine months and even help you review the last nine months if you're so inclined, some people like to do that. 
but it gives you all your activations. You get a reading, the check in with your Venus, which of course is your relationships and finances, which are pretty important to most people. This is the time to do it. So join us Thursday if you can. It'll be 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on November 17th. The next day, Friday the 18th, we have Sun sextiling Pluto. This is a healthy, positive, transformative energy. We love this one. You will have access to energy that will help you change your current circumstances for the better and or clear up an issue that has been challenging you for a while now. It's great for purifying, cleaning, and clearing your personal space as well as organizing your life in general. You may have to examine the big picture to see where an adjustment for the good of all involved is necessary. If you're not feeling up to working on outer issues, this also gives you the opportunity to do some introspective thinking and deep self-reflection. Superficial once-overs will not do. You must address the root cause for where you find yourself at this time in your life and decide if it's working for you or against you. Deep breath. Then on Saturday the 19th, we have Mars squaring Neptune for the second of three times. This is part of the retrograde. First hit was on October 12th. Second hit is this week, November 19th. And the final hit will be in the new year, March 14th, right before spring equinox. Like I said, it's not really over until then, because here we've got this annoying energy, to say the least, this challenge to grow. Basically, you may be confronted with challenges which are a direct result of earlier choices. These are the kind of choices you eventually realize were wrong and hoped the consequences would somehow pass you by. Not so much. You may feel very discouraged, possibly depressed, and be filled with fear and doubt. The key to getting through this energy is to take a step back, reflect on your choices and what led you to this point, and as objectively as possible, evaluate what went wrong. The tendency with this energy is to want to give up completely on the path you have chosen, when all that is probably necessary is a little tweaking. Try to identify the aspect that is causing the conflict. Okay, so with Neptune, it's illusions and delusions. It's not being realistic and practical. It's being disconnected with Mars from your body and your actions and your choices. So this is also related to our boundaries and our spiritual practices. It's in Gemini to Pisces, so we're just processing mentally and emotionally on this deeper level because Mars is lingering there and Neptune's living in Pisces for 14 whole years. So this is a big deal because of their placements. I can't even do the math that lines them up to connect like this. If you don't feel that you can be objective enough or that you struggle with identifying this aspect, enlist two other people to give you their opinion, then follow your gut instinct on the direction to take from there. The other temptation with this energy is to be deceptive, either to yourself or others. Denial for self, but there is a lot of slicksters out there right now, too. Trying to run game on everybody, so good boundaries is the key to all Mars-Neptune connections. But certainly the challenging square ones. We're growing out of comfort zone into new territory here, and we're adjusting what we believe to be true or possible so that we can make new choices, right? Either way, don't give in. It will only come back to bite you harder later, that is, if you try to be slick. Your physical energy is likely to be low as well. Do not force yourself to do anything that you are truly not feeling right now. Instead, meditate on what actions might be necessary when your energy returns. Be still. Avoid confrontations with others as it is just the energy pushing you out of comfort zone into new territory. And I'm just going to raise my hand on this right here. Gemini is reason, Pisces is crazy. And if you're trying to reason with crazy, it can be a challenge. I don't even bother with that no more, for real. This is a test of sorts, and the best way to deal with it is to face your fears and clarify your desires. That should be a bumper sticker. Face your fears and clarify your desires. My personal two cents about these two planets, Mars and Neptune, in a difficult angle is to reflect on what actions have been taken and not worked toward the fulfillment of your dreams and start your tweaking there. Deep breath. Think in terms of the last year or two, which of course is an unusual year or two, but it is what it is. In 2020, Mars retrograded in Aries, resetting the masculine in a huge way to the tune of 30 some years, right? The last time it did that was 88. So the last time it retrograded in Gemini was 1990. So that late 80s, early 90s energy is circling back a little bit in various ways that we want to be mindful of. Some of it was wonderful. Some of it was horrible, you know. (laughs) 
for me, in total equal measure. It was high highs and low lows for all the way from 88 to 92. So deep breath. We want to make new choices. We want to see our identity and purpose in a new way because that has been reset before, during, and after COVID, which is what Mars has been real frustrated, you know, because we haven't been able to act and move the way we prefer, let's say, the way we may have been used to in a certain way. Change is not necessarily bad, but we also need to do self-preservation. What's best for you, the individual, and make your choices from there. Maintain your good boundaries that I always say should be hemp or bamboo, super strong, super flexible, and breathable. You don't want brick walls where you don't know what's going on around you, and you don't want to be like gauze or anything too porous that allows you to become overwhelmed. Bamboo and hemp are super strong and flexible and still breathable, so we love that. So work on those boundaries right now, because as you can see, this Mars square Neptune is throughout the whole time. It's when it went in and as it stirs it up and when it comes out, we get another dose that says, OK, what you doing? How you doing? What are you believing? What kind of choices are you making? Are you delusional? Are you seeing things through rose colored glasses? You got to really ask. And at the same time, I don't want to sleep on the connection to God and spirit. So this is also telling me Mars, our action planet, we need to upgrade our spiritual practices in order to make them more suitable for here and now, to make them more effective for here and now. So let's meditate on that this week as well, if you can. And I think that wraps it up. We're preparing for that new moon in Sag, which on the same day, Jupiter goes forward. So that's going to be pretty powerful as well. So take advantage of this kind of personal week where spirit and the energies and the planets, everybody's asking you to sort of pull in and reflect and process and integrate what you've learned and experienced and the ideas and things that have come up this year. What's working, what's not, what can you build on, what's dead on the vine and needs to be composted. You know, where are you at? Do your year end assessments are starting to roll in right now. And the better we can do that, then the cleaner we can start in the spring. So I think that covers our week. It's already pretty busy and long. So thank you for being part of the community. Thank you for listening. Reach out if you need to. This is Kelly Beard of Karmic Tools signing off.